What happened just before Susan Smith drove her kids into the lake? Inside Edition has uncovered new information about this terrible crime. That report and more on Inside Edition from Los Angeles right now. the exclusive home videos that tell a different story. A loving mother and two happy kids. Today, Nicole's cousin, Ralph Bauer, gives us an inside look at the private side of Nicole, her children, and their superstar dad, who stands accused of their mother's murder. Denise called me. She kept telling me he killed her. Ralph, he killed her. The two little boys were laid to rest, a nation mourned innocence lost. Amid the heartache and sorrow, their aunt remembers her angels in heaven. When I close my eyes at night, I just hear him crying for his mama. I'm trying to get out. The terrible tragedy that tore at America's hearts and a grieving family trying to cope. murders stunned the world. Now we take a look at their last hours on Earth, from where the boys had their last meal, to the infamous stoplight where their mother said they were kidnapped, and finally to the cold lake that became their watery grave, trying to make sense of a senseless crime. Thanks for watching Inside Edition today. We are at the L.A. County Courthouse, and today our broadcast will deal with the two crimes that have stunned America. We have new information on both. A little later on, we'll hear from a member of Nicole Brown Simpson's family who says there was suspicion of O.J. in the Brown family early on. We'll also have new video. But first, the story that has shocked America, the murder of those two children in South Carolina. Finally, new information is coming out about the hours leading up to their horrible deaths. Katrina Daniel with our story. The saga started here Tuesday night, October 25th. Susan Smith told police she had taken the boys shopping here at this Walmart. When police questioned people here, however, no one remembered seeing Susan or the boys. And when she was confronted with this by police, Susan broke down and admitted that she'd actually been driving aimlessly through town. Michael and Alex strapped into their car seats in the back seat of her car. But sources tell Inside Edition that Susan did make one stop that night. It was here, at this Pizza Hut, where she would take Michael and Alex for what would turn out to be their last meal. Afterwards, she kept on driving, police believe, right through the small town, which would soon become the focus of national attention. She came to this intersection. She told police that the traffic light was red, and it's here she claims that a black man pointing a gun jumped into her car and ordered her to drive. But this is where she made her first big mistake. This traffic light is always green, unless there's another car waiting to approach from a side street. Six and a half miles later, Susan said it was here along this dark road that the carjacker forced her out of the Mazda. She also told police she tried to run after the car. Then she staggered up this driveway to the McLeod family home, hysterically begging for help. Despite a nine-day-long nationwide search, police say this is where Michael and Alex met their horrible end. In her confession, Susan said, quote, I wanted to end my life so bad and was in my car ready to go down that ramp into the water. And I did go part way, but I stopped. I went again and I stopped. Then I got out of the car a nervous wreck. I dropped to the lowest when I allowed my children to go down that ramp into the water without me. I took off running and screaming, oh God, oh God, no, what have I done? End quote. Susan's defense attorney disputes this, but according to a report in Newsweek magazine, Susan saw Michael, dressed only in his underwear, struggling in absolute terror for his life as the car went in the water. 
Of course, the other victim in this case is David Smith, the father of little Michael and Alex. When we come back, we will talk with David's sister about the ordeal he is going through. I think he's been in shock. I think it was finally hitting him that he had to, when he had to bury him. He didn't want to leave him. He didn't want to leave the babies. More than a week, David Smith believed his children were suffering at the hands of a desperate carjacker. Then came the shocking revelation. His sons were dead and his estranged wife was charged. Today, David must start the long process of rebuilding his life. We spoke with his sister this morning about the funeral and how he is coping. Madeline McFadden with our story. On Sunday, hundreds of mourners crowded around the small town church as little Alex and Michael Smith were laid to rest. The boy's father, David Smith, was overwhelmed with grief. He didn't want to leave the babies. The more he cried, the more I cried. David's uncle, Douglas, was with him at the boy's wake. The number of people that came through was overwhelmed. David stood there and he touched everybody that came through. These home videos from the funeral were shot by people close to the Smith family. The intimate videos captured the agonizing grief felt by those who were touched by Alex and Michael. When I closed my eyes at night, I just hear him crying for his mama. David's sister, Rebecca, has been there for her brother to lean on since the kids were reported missing. Our lives had been torn apart by this tragic event. From the beginning, he believed her story. You know, she lied to everybody, come up with a suspect. You know, down to small details of the carjack, and that was all a lie. And I know he feels betrayed because he believed her every day and every night. He never doubted her. Even when the whole world did, David didn't. He stood beside her. From the beginning, Rebecca says Susan had fooled the entire family, just as she had fooled the rest of the world. And I pray that whoever has them, that the Lord would let them, and let him realize that they are missed and loved more than any children in this world. Susan, why did you do it? Susan. But then came Susan's horrifying confession. Rebecca got the news by phone. I just fell down. I couldn't believe it. Just total shock. The whole thing has been a nightmare. And that really was a nightmare to hear that. I feel betrayed by Susan. I believed her. And if it wasn't for all that happened, and I had to really hear it from David and my dad that it was true before I really did believe it. Because this is a woman I admired. She was one of the best mothers you'd ever meet. I don't hate her. Because this isn't Susan that did this. It's a different Susan. Something in her mind snapped. The person who killed them wasn't my sister-in-law. It was someone else. It was a different Susan. Rebecca says David is usually quiet and hides his emotions. On Saturday, he went to the lake to say a private goodbye to his sons. Nobody recognized him. You know, he was just down there. He was just one of the observers. And he went down there with my Uncle Doug. And, you know, he just went down there, I guess, to see, you know, who all had came and in his own way, maybe say, maybe say goodbye in a way down there. Much of what David has learned about his wife's chilling actions has come from the media. Last night they had a, a quote supposedly from Susan, which the papers deny today, that before the car went down she saw Michael struggling to get out of his car seat. And we just happened to be watching the 11 o'clock news when he came in and that was on there. And his whole, I mean, his face, it's just, you know, you could tell it was that killed him to know that. He just said, oh, God. Then yesterday, Rebecca rode in the same car with her brother on the way to the funeral. I just told him to be strong. We all did. We all just kept on telling him to hold on and be strong. Because I think it was finally hitting him that he had to, when he had to bury him. And he had to go to the grave, you know, to the grave site. I think it was finally hitting him. And that's why he didn't want to leave. But all along, he has been in shock. He was asking why. He didn't, he doesn't understand, which he, none of us do, understand why it had to happen. Now Rebecca is trying to help her brother pick up the shattered pieces of his life. 
David will no doubt be mourning the loss of his precious sons for a very long time. I don't think he'll ever get over it. He's hurt and he's angry that it happened. Seeing David hurting like he was, it just tore me up inside. Because when you love somebody, you never want them to have to go through anything like that. And Rebecca says as part of his healing, David wants to talk to his wife. I talked to David Saturday night after we were at the funeral home and I asked him, I said, this may be inappropriate. I asked, asked him if he still wanted to talk to her and he said most definitely that he needed that. He needed to talk to her. If not, just ask why. If only to ask why. And Susan Smith remains under a 24-hour suicide watch at a state prison in Columbia, South Carolina. David is back in his own apartment with his parents. And when we come back from Los Angeles, Nicole Brown Simpson's cousin tells Inside Edition one member of the family believed from the very beginning that O.J. did kill Nicole. Sydney got an ice cream maker from the Salinger's next door. Yeah. We can make ice cream and all kinds of things. I don't know why, what, how. I kept, you know, it kept sticking in my mind with what Denise was saying on the phone. I'll be killing her. I'll be killing her. Wednesday on Inside Edition, how could a videotape land this kid in jail? Cops say he left a tell-all tape in a camera he stole. The L.A. courthouse right behind me was the scene of more hearings today in the O.J. Simpson case. Watching the proceedings closely is the family of Nicole Brown Simpson. And today we have a look inside the private life of Nicole and O.J., provided by a close family member who says the family was suspicious of O.J. from the very beginning. Joel Loy with our story. Kids are selling lemonade. They have a customer. They have a customer. The voice of the woman speaking to her children at the now famous Rockingham estate is that of the late Nicole Brown Simpson. Fill it up good. You got it? Yeah. Great. Mommy, you gonna open up yours? I guess so. These home videos, shot mostly by Nicole and O.J., provide an intimate look at the young mother whose life ended so tragically. Sydney got an ice cream maker from the Salinger's next door. Yeah. And we can make ice cream and all kinds of things. Those who knew Nicole miss her terribly, and none more so than her family, the Browns. Her father, Lou, her mother, Judita, sisters, Tanya, Dominique, and Denise. And now another family member tells us a side of the tragedy you've never heard before. You miss Nicole? A lot. What do you miss most? Her highs and her hugs. Just to say on the phone, I love you. Nicole and Ralph Bauer were cousins, but in fact they loved each other like brother and sister. As a youngster, an orphaned Ralph Bauer was taken in and raised by the Brown family. Nicole's mother, Judita, is Ralph's mother's sister. Ralph was there when Nicole was born in Germany, and later joined the Browns in the United States. Like the rest of the family, Nicole's brutal murder and subsequent arrest of O.J. have left Ralph Bauer in turmoil. It seems like our hearts go in one way, our heads go in the other way. Our minds twisted. And it's just continuously, continuously something's coming up. It just seems like a never-ending movie. A story that's never-ending. Nicole. You, you want to get closer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nicole. One scene from that movie is indelibly etched in Rolf Bauer's mind. The moment he found out Nicole was gone. Then he's called me. It was about seven, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, I believe. <sighs> she just said, um, Nicole's dead. It's possibly a drive-by. And I just had to hang up on her. I said, I'm sorry, Denise, I can't talk to you right now. I just got down on my knees and... called her back again and she kept telling me he killed her. Ralph, he killed her. 
killed her. Nicole's sister, Denise Brown, has confirmed Ralph Bauer's story. Since her murder, millions of words have been written about Nicole and her relationship with O.J. Hundreds of photographs have been published. Her image is virtually everywhere. But who was she really? Night, night. What do we say? I love you. I love you. That's the way Nicole. That's the way she is. That's the way she talks. The love that comes out of her voice to, with her children and with her family, it's just, that's the way Nicole is. I mean, we're talking two and a half here. We're not talking four or five. We're talking two and a half years old. And we, ain't, just... we ain't talking about a baseball. We're talking about a moon. Yeah. <laughs> For most of Nicole's adult life, O.J. Simpson also experienced that love. By all appearances, it was an idyllic life. Oh, Mom, show it to Mommy. Show Mommy all the things you got. A life that on many occasions included Rolf Bauer. Bauer worked for O.J. part-time for more than 10 years, doing gardening at the estate and later managing a chicken restaurant. When Rolf and his wife Maria brought their first child home from the hospital, Nicole and O.J. were there. Auntie Nicole, let me hold this. Auntie Nicole. But looking back, Bauer says there were signs of serious problems in the Simpson marriage. Well, <clears throat> I've seen something at the house one time that uh, had me wondering. What did you see? Well, she had family pictures all along up the hallway, up to the stairway, uh, going to the bedroom. All our family pictures hanging there, pictures of all of us. And, and one time I went to the house and they were all smashed up. Each and every one of them, just the glass broken or they were on the floor or really like somebody's fist was just punching each and every one of them. Did Santa bring something? Although these pictures show happier times, Bauer says things are not always as they seem. A bicycle? Because you know, you have, to, you have to understand she, it's where she was, it was like a, a jail for her. She couldn't go any place without after telling him, hey, I'm going to go shopping. I got to take the kids someplace. And so as soon as he comes home, he's questioning her up and down. You know, and it doesn't, it, Nicole needed freedom. Rolf Bauer says he never witnessed any physical abuse, but the Brown family now says they believe Nicole was a battered woman. That it took her three years to prepare for the divorce, to prepare herself mentally for to be able to walk away and go through all that because she was constantly afraid. Christmas Day, 1991, inside the Simpson mansion. OJ makes a Christmas wish. We're doing this for years now, everybody. But that was not to be. Within months, Nicole would file for divorce. According to Bauer, a major contributing factor was O.J.'s alleged womanizing. She always had to find out the hard way from somebody else. If it's a call from New York, hey, this girl, he's miss. This girl got a bracelet. This girl got a condo. This girl got a car. I mean, your mind must go nuts. After the divorce, Nicole began her new life, enjoying the freedom that came with being young and single. But according to family members, as always, most of her time was spent with Sydney and Justin. You got Ninja Turtle underwear? <laughs> she loved her children. The things she did for her kids, I mean, I couldn't even do them. In the months preceding her death, Nicole and O.J. tried to get back together and failed. And strangely, in the final weeks of her life, Nicole seemed to have been putting her affairs in order. She had every little scrapbook done to the last minute. She had her will done. Everything was taken care of. She knew it was coming. She saw her death coming. I think, you know what I think? It's just this part supposed to go in here. On the evening of June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson was murdered and her family was at the beginning of a nightmare of grief and confusion that has yet to be resolved. I don't know why, what, how. 
how it could be. But it kept, you know, it kept sticking in my mind with what Denise was saying on the phone. Ralphie killed her. Ralphie killed her. And tomorrow we will have more of our exclusive interview with Rolf Bauer. Among the revelations, he'll tell us what O.J. said to Nicole's father when he asked flat out if O.J. killed his daughter. And Inside Edition will continue from L.A. right after this. Tomorrow we'll be back here in Los Angeles and here's what's upcoming. You've seen exclusive, intimate home videos of the Simpson family. Now, there's more. Unforgettable moments you won't want to miss. Also, in the 80s, vanity defined hot music and even hotter photo spreads. From pop diva to playboy model to obscurity. I have been forgiven for so much in my life. Why did vanity trade the glamorous life for God and the gospel? That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. As always, we thank you for watching Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly, reporting from Los Angeles. Hope to see you again tomorrow. The TV show that is credited for saving lives is coming up next on TV 58. Rescue 911. Straight ahead.